What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Shogren here with my co-host, Emmanuel Pani. We're part of a group of specialized real estate investors you've probably never heard of. We didn't start with deep pockets or wealthy families, and we don't rely on 401ks, mutual funds, or traditional real estate investing. In fact, many of us don't even own the properties that fund our freedom. If you ask the money experts out there, they'd say what we do is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through a new niche called short-term rentals. We are Short-Term Rental Nation, and these are our secrets. What is going on, STR Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Short-Term Rental Secrets Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Shogren. Here, as always, with my main man and brother from another mother, Mr. Emmanuel Pani. What's up, E? My brother, so good to see you. I am feeling super grateful. This week, me and Tasha celebrated eight years, our wedding anniversary. So I don't know how she lasted, how she lasted that long. Um, Cheers to so Tasha. A big shout out to Tasha. Yeah, congratulations for, I don't know, surviving this long. But yeah, man, super grateful. Life awesome. is good. Yeah, man. It's crazy. Um, time really I, flies, bro. You know? It does. And now we're recording this on June 1st. And yeah. uh, I feel like this is the only time of year where the tables turn. And my weather is amazing. And your weather is rainy and hot as shit. So Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But now that I have like new roofs and new impact windows, I don't, I'm not stressing as much about it. Yeah, and so now every afternoon with a little rainstorm, I'm actually like really enjoying enjoying the weather in the summertime. You know, yeah. so it's been good. Um, I got my impact doors coming. Um, it's always crazy to me how long how long that takes, mm. like, you know, and, and like how hard of a estimate that like it's gonna be six weeks, and then six weeks passes. Like actually, sorry, but we meant eight to ten weeks, and we're like, guys, like come on, you know. Yeah, we've been dealing with that a lot on the hotel side where they're having to send us stuff piecemeal because I'm like, all right, well, I need it. Like our guys are waiting. Give me something for now. So I think we have like now we're at like 75% of all the bathroom fixtures and everything. And we've got the the rough sign offs. So now we're closing everything up, tiling, mm-hmm. you know, putting in all the fixtures. But I'm like, come on, let's go. Like we, we got to yeah. keep it rolling. No, and it's something that you don't you don't consider when you go from like the SDR space to the boutique hotel space. It's like when you're ordering like 40, 50, 50 60, of them, 70 yeah. of them, it takes a while. And it's not like you can run to Home Depot. Like it's exactly. not one of those things that you're like, you know, unless you want to run to every single Home Depot in your area, which I've done that, right? You could go chase things around for the different Home Depots, but I'm like, that's not really life, you know? Yeah. But. yeah. Well, uh, I'm, I'm excited for our guest today. As always, uh, he, he is a veteran to the show, and uh, I consider him a good friend and a, a business partner on the STR Wealth Con. So today on the show, we have Mr. Bill Faith back with us. I'm not going to go through his extensive bio again, but uh, I'll let him just give us the Cliff Notes version again. We'll make sure that the link down in the show notes to the previous episodes we've had Bill on. But um, he's Bill's the real deal, and uh, he's one of the best marketers that I've ever met. And um, I'm really excited to talk about what we're going to talk about today. And for context, I didn't even tell you this, Bill, but um, the other day I was looking at our performance for my Florida house and we've been killing it on Verbo. And I was just checking my calendar and I don't go into Airbnb much because I run everything through the PMS, but I went on there and I was checking the calendars and I noticed one of my Verbo bookings didn't sync over to Airbnb. And I was like, oh shit, like what is going on? And it would still show it available. And then when we dug deeper, what I found is Airbnb thought, uh, I'm charging too much for my cleaning fee. And so they just decided to stop syncing it. And I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me right now. And so for those of you that have larger properties, if you go in now, they have a policy where it's basically, you can't charge more than $600 plus 25% of your average nightly rate. And usually that's not a problem, but for last week, I wanted to see if I could fill it. So I dropped it to like 497 for two nights. And then uh, I got a booking, but my cleaning fee, my cleaners are like 700 bucks. So it like threw us over and it just stopped sinking. So again, it just reiterates the importance of taking back control of your marketing and not relying on an OTA. Because if you do, they got you by the balls, excuse my language. And like you, you don't, like Mark says, you don't want to build your house on somebody else's land. So Anyway, I'm going to shut up now because I know I know you can talk. So I'm going to let you run with it for a bit. If you give it to me, you're never getting it back. That's what I'm saying. Um, and you guys look cute today. I mean, I know you're wearing the oh, same thank shirts, you. but, you know. We no, they're not the same shirts. They're not the same shirts, but we, we, we do this for you, Bill. And, like, I, I have 
Like, you know, like I haven't I'm, seen the chest hair since the STR Wealth Conference. So I know, because we don't get to see each other. Anytime you want to call me, you can call me on FaceTime. I'll pick up for you. And Sweet. It's, it's, I love it. You know, um, yeah. you know it's, it's really interesting. I think this is my third time on your guys' podcast. And, you know, when you do mm -hmm. five on SNL, there's a big fucking celebration. So I think <laughs> yeah, we we'll all get need to jacket. Five together when I hit number five on the STR Secrets podcast. Um, we'll you you know, it kind of goes back to, I like think, one of the thing. emails you sent out. You send out like seven emails a day now, Mike. But after we had that email discussion about eight months ago, uh, I think one of them was about Price Labs or something this morning. I think I get two from you every morning. And you can't really just set it and forget it, even though all, whether it's Price Labs or Beyond or, uh, you know, Wheelhouse, these are these automated dynamic pricing tools, but there's a manual you know, level that has to go into the pricing optimization. Uh, you had Jeff on, you and I were just briefly chatting about, you know, IntelliHost and uh, that type of stuff, which I think is going to help a lot of people as well. Uh, but kind of going back to what you saw, I think it's something that's really important that people, number one, they're not keeping up with these policy changes. You know, they're relying on people like you and me to really go in and, and put it into our groups and, you know, put it here to announce it. It's super important because I've got a couple of large properties and I do go over, I used to go over 600 bucks. I've lowered them. Um, I've seen success in my rankings by lowering my, um, my pricing on a property by property basis. I did it for one property that it did not affect, that actually affected it adversely. So I think that's one thing that everybody needs to understand. Any influencer, any owner, anybody posting in the social media, when they say that something works for them or did not work for them, you need to understand that does not necessarily mean that it's going to work for you or not work for you. You know, all of us own single family homes. E and Mike both have boutique hotels. What works for E, you know, down in Florida may not work for Mike up in the Northeast. So we always have to test that stuff. And I think that's really the rule number one for marketing is don't believe all the bullshit that you see on social media. Um, whatever, whether you're learning something from HubSpot or me or Mark Simpson or whoever on the marketing side, if it's digital, you have to test. If you don't test and you don't properly run an A-B test to the best of your ability, and we don't really have the ability to do that on Airbnb and Verbo, um, then we, we, we don't know what's really going to work and not going to work. That comes from my years. You ask about me introducing myself. I mean, I'm a washed up golf professional that wasn't very successful. I failed at seven startups. Those weren't very successful. And that's kind of led me to, to today of why I got into real estate, because it's been pretty easy for most of you over the last two and a half years. Uh, but moving forward, you know, that that ship is sailed. I, I don't believe in the Airbnb bust hashtag. I believe we're seeing normalization for those of us that have been in this in the real estate game, whether it's LTR, you know, short term rental could be midterm rentals if you've been around universities and hospitals prior to COVID. But this to me, I, I'm comparing my numbers in 18 and 19 to today. There's no fucking bust. It's just normalization of what's happening, you know, today. So the one thing that separated me from my competitors prior to, uh, you know, COVID, didn't have to really do it a whole lot during COVID. I just tried to jack my prices as high as I could, to be honest with you. And then now, for pro probably since about September, October of last year, you know, and we were talking about this in our Miami STR Wealth Retreat, if you remember that is just what's impending, what's coming. Um, and it'll be really interesting, Mike, for, for me. I was yelling from the rooftops that starting probably in December of last year through the first part of this year would be the best investing time. Um, and I don't know if I'm right or wrong. I think that's on an individual basis. But what I'm seeing with mortgage rates right now and also that pr uh, home prices are not continuing to decline in many, many markets and sure – you know, Orlando's taking a hit, Gatlinburg's taking a hit, Scottsdale's taking a major hit over the fall. It looks like there's normalization because of the supply and demand component. I don't think we're going to see as big of a hit as we thought. So um, I'm, I still believe that the marketing component is going to be the biggest separator from here moving forward for everybody. 100%. And just one we're thing to clarify, Bill, just for folks that may be new to marketing and they have no marketing experience, what is an A-B test? Like if we gave an example of that. Just for context. Yeah. So an A-B test is, let's just say that you're going to run a Facebook ad, right? And you, what you want to do is, is you can't just, do, you don't, let me rephrase that. You don't want to just deploy one ad. So when Chris, my COO at Build Short Term Rental Wealth and I create Facebook ads, we're typically creating like three to five different images. 
three to five different headlines that would go underneath the image that you see in the ads, three to five different renditions of, of copy. We're actually doing this after this podcast for our war room and we're, we're creating five ads. And then the cool thing about like Facebook or YouTube ads or whatever is we don't really have to do that AB test. It used to be that we'd have to manually track that. Facebook ads now has a thing called dynamic creative. It will take the best copy, the best creative and create its own ad for us if we didn't get the combination right based on their own testing. And then we can elect just to run that ad. But a true A-B test means, and, and really this comes into listing optimization. Um, before like having a platform like Rank Breeze, which I use daily, uh, and they have this, you know, this log to where I can go in and document everything I do. It used to be, I'm going to update my title. I'm going to move images. I'm going to update copy. I'm going to do like five or six or seven things at one time. But now I can change one thing. I can just change my title on my Airbnb listing. I can go into Rank Breeze. I can say June 1st, old title change to new title and date stamp it. Wait 72 hours for the algorithm to kick in and the API to kick the information back out to Rank Breeze from uh, Airbnb. Uh, then I go in and I'll take what where my I've moved. If I moved from you know page one to page two, I know I made a mistake. So then I'm going to go and I'm going to move it back to where it was. And if I move back from page two to page one, then I'm back in the same position. Then I'm going to make one more iteration, make a slight change to the title. And if I move up on page one, say I go from 11th position to third position, now I know I'm going in the right direction. So it's incrementally testing one change, one iteration, one update at a time. That's the big thing. So we have A and we have B and then the traffic, the bookings, the click through rate, whatever we're trying to test, A or B is going to be a distinct winner. Once you have a five to 10% delta, a difference between A and B, then you want to follow that track and keep improving. It's a little bit technical, but all you're trying to do is change one, the simple, here's the cliff notes. Make one change, literally wait to see the results. If it works, keep going down that path. If it doesn't work, go back to the original and start over. It's and happening 72 hours between those two. That is correct. And just do the one thing, because I know it's tempting that you're like, all right, I'm going to reduce my prices. I'm going to change my photo. I'm going to fix this copy. And you want to do everything at once. But if you do that, you don't know which one of those things worked. So 100%. I know it sucks and you got to play the waiting game, but that's the only way to effectively test. 100%. Go ahead, E. I keep cutting you off, buddy. I'm no, no. I just wanted to like make sure that people understood it is 72 hours. Because that the other thing is, in addition to people being impatient and changing, multiple. That, that's what kills marketing, E, digitally yeah. wise, right? So, I mean, I recommend to all of my students when we're actually teaching this, to it's 72 hours for an update. Wait five to seven days. Don't go in and make changes two or three times a week anymore. Because now we can actually see the results that happen if you're using Rank Breeze. If not... You've got to use a Chrome incognito browser to be able to go in and search without all of your cookies attached to, to your profile and get some real results. I also recommend doing that right along with what you're seeing in Rank Breeze as well, just where you can hold Rank Breeze and the data uh, accountable. Love it. Love it. So let's let's talk about the um, the marketing side of it. I know we just touched on like the Facebook ads. So... If somebody's frustrated or scared of different changes going on with the OTAs and they're like, all right, I know I need to start doing some marketing for my properties, but I don't know what the hell that is. Let's, let's talk through what that would look like. So if you've been on Airbnb, Verbo, or a PMS, anything, even if it's just been for six months and you've, let's say you've had 20 guests, the number one thing is you need to get that information, the contact information for those guests and get them into an email list. And, you know, I, I, you know, who I, you know, probably know what I'm going to talk about next. And Arthur Coker should probably give me like 5% and all of us that are, <laughs> you know, <laughs> preaching stay fi. Uh, but you need to have stay fi, even if you literally have a two, two, you know, if you, a studio, a one bedroom, I don't know that I would invest in the stay fi, but two, two, all the way up to a fucking 52 room boutique hotel, like Mike's got, or my properties that average like 14 guests in a single family home, stay fi will capture everybody uh, that's staying in that property that wants to connect to your Wi-Fi. And then you you literally use Zapier to get their information out and send it 
into whatever you're using for your email service provider, constant contact, active campaign, market my STR, whatever it is. But you got one manual process here. So if E and myself are guests, Mike is the booker, and we're staying at ABC property in the Bahamas, then you're going to get Mike's information into uh, your PMS. You're going to get all three of us when we log in to StayFi. Mike is the client. E and Bill are highly qualified leads. So that means there needs to be separation of church and state here. Mike needs to go into a segmented email list as your clients, your guests. E and Bill need to be in, in what I call your HQLs, your high qualified leads, because we've already experienced your amazing property in the Bahamas, right? So you need to market to us slightly differently, just a little bit. You don't have to like rewrite emails, but just headlines and like that first paragraph needs to be different in what you send to Mike versus what you send to me and E as your highly qualified leads that were a guest in the same property because Mike was the booker. You need a CRM to be able to do that. Um, tagging systems can get complex in active campaign and um, you know, MailChimp and stuff like that. And there's very affordable CRMs that are available. You don't need to be spending a thousand bucks or fifteen hundred bucks for HubSpot or ConfusionSoft. That's in that's Infusionsoft. I think they have a new name now. Uh, but there's affordable options that are out there to be able to do that. Email marketing is the number one thing. We were talking, you know, kind of uh, you know, I, I joke with you when we first started about how many emails a day you're sending out. I think you send out two to three a day now. You were sending out like one every, what, three or four weeks when we had that first conversation. And I'm sure you're reaping the benefits of not only the volume of the emails that you're sending, but also because the, the content is high quality that you're sending out. So I just did this Super Host Sunday thing. It's on my Build Short Term Rental Wealth YouTube channel. Everybody can see it. It's about the guest sentiment. So when a guest stays with you, there's this guest transition right? And when that guest transitions out of our property at checkout, which in the whole flow chart, that's the red box, then they become a highly qualified lead again. I don't view them as a client. They now become a highly qualified lead because my job as a marketer, as a homeowner or a real estate owner, as a salesperson, is now I have to entice them to come back. And that's even if they've had an incredible time, that's usually harder to do than it is to get them to come to your property the first time. Because we see with the advent and so many more properties available than there was 15 years ago, 15 years ago, the family would go to the same place year over year, specifically where you live, Mike, in the Northeast, way more prominent even today than it is where E and I are in the South, right? So people are looking for new experiences. That's where if you do have two properties or five or 10 or 50 that you have to introduce, we never sell, but you introduce them to the rest of your portfolio with value propositions. So that guest transition is critical to bring those guests back, you know, to be able to get them to rebook. And I think people think it's easier, but it's actually more challenging because of the options and the new experiences that we're all looking for. Yeah. I actually love that you brought that up because that was one of the questions that I had for you, which is this, right? You have an extended list now and you just launched a new property in White, Whitefish, Montana. Yep. Is that, did you like Montana before watching Yellowstone or did you start watching Yellowstone and then started liking Montana? What's the story there? Uh, I took my family to COVID uh, on about a week's notice, the third week of June in 2020. Yeah. We flew to Salt Lake City, drove to okay. Yellowstone, spent a week all throughout West Yellowstone, the Tetons, fell in love with Montana. Yeah. Um, was not it aware incredible. of- Yeah. It incredible. Yeah. Well, I mean, we just loved it. So my dream, if anybody's ever been to Yellowstone, if you've been there, you drive in that West entrance out of West Yellowstone, the Madison river, about two miles in, it's just the most majestic thing that I've ever seen in my life. And my dream was to be out there fly fishing, you know, yeah. literally waiting and standing <laughs> in the Madison river. So was, I told my wife, yeah. I said, I'm going to buy a fucking house in Montana. It took me two, two and a half years to find the yeah. right property. And now what I've got is just fucking off the chain. Uh, yeah. It's exact. It's the only property I own that's exactly what I want. Exactly. Um, and but it's it's challenging. So I'm sure you're going to ask me what do I do with the email list since I just listed that, right? Correct. Like, how do you introduce people? What kind of copy you send to people? Like, what does that look like? So if we have somebody that has somewhat of an email list and they've been marketing and maybe they changed completely different state, right? Or like like you. Yeah. So I'll start with the country. email title. I send it to all my past guests, and it's. The email title was, I had a dream. 
It's now reality. And then literally the very first sentence is, two and a half years ago, I visited Yellowstone National Park in Montana, and I knew I, I was going to buy a retirement home in the state of Montana. Took me two and basically, if you want the true Montana experience to be, have a river in your backyard, have a lake 100 yards away, be within an hour, 45-minute drive to Glacier National Park, skiing on you know Big Mountain, all that type of stuff, this is my dream retirement home, and my wife Bria and I are excited to share this with you. We are now taking bookings privately only, so it's not on Airbnb and Verbo yet, and it probably won't until the end of the year, but we are taking private bookings. So we've created this level of exclusivity for people that are on my email list, mm -hmm. which is really important, right? Mm -hmm. So like there's two big differences between like Mike's mastermind and my mastermind. You know, I see it. Mike, Mike has a lot of, lot of stuff that goes out about his mastermind. I don't. Mike's mastermind is I think maybe three to four times larger than mine. Um, you know, I keep mine smaller and exclusive. So I believe in exclusivity from a marketing perspective and that carries and, and Mike's doing great and I'm doing great. There's multiple ways to be able to do this. But when you have a small number of properties, like less than 50, um, and I'm a small operator, I don't want 50 properties. So it's really, I want to introduce you to this and here's why that why part Capital W H Y in everything we do from marketing is critical. So mm -hmm. I'm sharing the story that these people are going to connect to because E, you brought up the show Yellowstone. I've seen data. It's amazing what that show has done Incredible. for tourism for yeah. that state. They said, say, I don't even remember what year that show launched, maybe 21 or something like that. But literally they estimate like $17 billion driven just from the show in tourism dollars going to that state. So for me, it's about the dream. It's about, I wanted the true Montana experience. It's about, I want to walk out my back door and literally from my deck, it's like 18 steps mm -hmm. and I'm stepping into the water in my waders and throwing a fly line. And I can fish till 10 o'clock at night, you know, mm -hmm. during the summer, the sun doesn't go down. Sunsets like right now, like 9 58 PM. It's insane. So if you share that dream of yours with somebody, they're going to want, if they have any connection at all, that's way better than saying, hey, new property, 10% off, book now. That's when people say, fuck this. And they either do one of two things. They ghost you and they just stop opening your emails because it's too easy to delete and they don't know how to subs unsubscribe. Or like me, I unsubscribe because nobody wants to be sold to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, and honestly, when I watched the show, so you had a picture that you showed me one the last time I saw you and there's just your backyard with the with the river and you're like this is where I want to go why like I'm gonna go fishing here and then we we're watching Yellowstone and there's this moment this guy is fishing there I'm like that's fucking Bill like that's what Bill wants are you to talking do. about I'm when like, Rip shows up with the little igloo and throws the rattlesnake into his face while he's ex ex exactly that scene bro and like what's funny is like I'm like Bill is not going to Montana to ride horses because I don't think there's a horse that's large enough with how tall Bill is so I'm like he's definitely going there why fish like fly fishing and it's incredible and i also want to know what is the benefit i i assume it's just like in the sharing of like your guys's experience but you you and you and bria are always like she's always involved and you always share how much of a journey for the family is so is that part of the is just how you want to market it or is just part of the thing because to me that speaks a lot right because you're like we have a dream we're so excited to welcome you into our, our dream home. So that has the added emotional component to it? Or why why do you write it? I, I always market my properties, even my co-hosting properties. I am a personal host. I am not a professional host on Airbnb as an example. Mm -hmm. Nobody nobody that books with us knows the brand Kiva Vacation Rentals. All they know is Bill Faith. And so I go in and I'm personally communicating with the automated messaging. And also if you, you saw the, the video that I told everybody that I do for any booking over five grand, you know, I'll send them the personalized video and I text it to them. I don't send it in platform, but there's this transition. So like when I talk about that guest transition, as they get closer to checkout about two days ahead of time, when we start sending the checkout, the pre-checkout, the checkout messages and that type of stuff, it goes from bill to bill and Bria. And then the very last one is 
signed off as the Faith family, Bill, Bria, Gentry, and Oakley, right? So I strategically use that to be able to connect with people. I don't know how many people actually go down and read that, but I've had people that have referenced it. So I always reference, once again, even my co-hosting properties, that it's our family beach house. Mm -hmm. This is our family cabin. This is whatever it is. It's always our family. Because I think there's two things that happen. When you start with that in the very beginning, I think people will have more respect for your property. We don't get a whole lot of damage and issues. I've actually only submitted one claim ever to Airbnb, luckily, knock on, knock on wood. <laughs> um, and it's different. If somebody checks into one of your guys' boutique hotels, they don't assimilate that with being a family property. So they don't take yeah. as good a care of it, right? Shit's everywhere. Diapers are thrown under the desk or the bed, whatever. And I say this and I just had a bad, you know, clean and a bad guest that did stuff like that at one of my properties. But, um, it's really that personal connection and trying to connect with my buyer persona. That's a huge part of marketing. And, you know, we all saw this on, on clubhouse and we see it today and it's interesting a lot of people mike you remember in miami and you were there the number one question that mike and i got in miami the intimate retreat that we did last fall was i mean tell me should i join your mastermind should i join bill's mastermind and everybody's trying to decide and they're asking us and they're asking other people and mike and i are so polar opposite it's like whichever one you resonate with is who you need to write the check for and then surround yourself because you're gonna have similar people based on personality differences and how we run our own, you know, business empires, if you will. So I think it's really important to understand that how you communicate, how you write, what you post, how you act, how you dress is everything about your own buyer persona as a host, as in the type of properties that you buy. Our personality exudes through what we do. And that's going to really dictate the type of, of customer, the type of guests that you're going to acquire. And if you're doing that correctly, you're going to get the guests that you want. It's kind of like when we first, Mike and I first started the SDR Wealth Conference. We said, this is going to be the biggest, most badass conference in our industry. And it represents the type of the ways that we've invested in the properties, what we've done to them to ARV them, what our wife's has done from design to I don't want to say go over the top, but really level up. And then we tried to do that same thing with the conference, right? It's just the way that we live our lives. I love that you brought that up because I, <clears throat> one of the questions that people ask me all the time, especially on the co-hosting side, and I think it, they have this limiting belief in this fear of like, well, how am I going to compete with a Vacasa or an Evolve or these huge companies? <laughs> and I say, ex I explain exactly what you just said is those companies can never have that personal touch. And if you look at what Airbnb built their entire platform and honestly shift this entire industry, it was people doing business with people. Like even, even for our hotels, if you look at our Airbnb profile, it's a picture of Kristen or a picture of me or a picture of both of us. It's not some branded thing because people want to connect with other people and keeping that in mind to create that personal experience, right? And so that's how you compete with the bigger dogs because they can't pull that off, quite frankly. And that's what excels you on some of these other platforms. And that's what you can build a true brand around. And if you're building your co-hosting business, it's why should you go with me? Because I actually give a shit, right? 100%. And, it, and it comes through on both sides of the equation with the guests and with the owners. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't, can't agree with you more. And there's too many people that are trying to brand a portfolio and build a portfolio and they think a hedge fund is going to come in and buy their 10 properties or whatever it is and they lose that personal touch and i'm all for you guys doing that because that gives me a huge distinct competitive advantage i don't as an educator i really don't want you to do that as a host i want you to do that because the more personal i can get with my guests and you think about it, it doesn't matter if you're selling you know to a, a a nurse or a college, well, a college student might be different, a nurse on midterm or somebody that's going to your property in Orlando to take their family or to my beach properties or Montana, wherever. It's an emotional purchase for them. And if we understand that it's an emotional purchase, even, even that travel nurse, it's somewhat emotional. Even though the insurance company or whoever's paying for that, he or she still wants that cool place to walk to the because they love sushi or to walk to the hospital or they don't want to have a car. Or they want to be close to hiking trails, whatever it is. There's an emotional state in that decision when they're searching for those properties, right? So very similar to what you said, really everything 
our about us page on our co-hosting company, the individual pages, direct booking sites. And if somebody, if anybody saw what we did, what Chris built, you know, full direct booking website in like 42 minutes yesterday, the about is Bill and Bree. And it's a picture of us in front of our front door of our house, you know, almost halfway hugging, you know, kind of posing, hugging together, because that's really, we double team, you know, part of that hosting, very similar to you. I do the buying and the hosting and, you know, Kristen designs and Bria designs, right? And it's a, it's a team event. At least for me, that's the other thing is that you get, it's a two for one here. You get Bill and Bria. It's not just Bill. Love it. It's a good segue too, because I, I wanted to, to make sure that we dive into the market my SDR platform, because for, for the folks that aren't marketing ninjas, I'm dope that you put this out because it just makes it so much more attainable for somebody to execute on the things that we've been talking about. Because if you're new and you're listening and you're like, this sounds great, but I am so overwhelmed and I don't mm -hmm. even know where the hell to start. Yeah. The way that you've put this together, it just really makes it easy for people to execute on this. So can you talk about what market my STR is and like, what is, what can, what can it do for people? Yeah, let me give everybody a little bit of backstory first. So most people are probably familiar with HubSpot. If you've looked at any all-in-one marketing platforms, May of 2006, I started my limousine company literally at this house uh, that I'm in with, I bought a limousine from Dallas and drove it and par parked it in our front uh, front driveway to start a limousine company in Nashville. Um, that was in May of 2006. September, I think it was September, October of 2006, Brian um, Halligan and Darmesh Shaw founded HubSpot in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, by the end of 2006, I was doing about $700,000 in revenue and expanded my limousine company. And I was doing Google ads. I was doing SEO for websites. I was blogging and I had already started on Twitter, which was a thing back then, but really my space was my social media channel, which you know, you younger people have probably never even heard of it unless you've seen uh, the Justin Timberlake movie. And I was ripping music off of Napster back then. The problem was, is the same thing. So I, I became HubSpot's 33rd customer. And over the next four years, I turned that into a $10 million company on the back of HubSpot. Uh, from And I did everything HubSpot. I actually helped them build their partner program because I had a $12 million marketing agency once I exited out of that. But the, the key for HubSpot was, is they were really the first affordable platform. That's what, this is when they were affordable. I started at $300 a month on a basic plan with HubSpot. When I quit HubSpot in 2017, I think it was, I was spending like $4,700 a month on HubSpot because you're paying by contacts. You're paying by, you know, new feature sets that come in by adding the CRM, all that type of stuff. It escalates. It just got way out of hand, too expensive uh, for me. So Fast forward to my marketing in the STR space. I mean, I've got multiple properties. I've got 23 right now, you know, and I've got to have social accounts for them. I've got to have email accounts for them. I've got to have direct booking sites for them. I've got to have all that type of stuff where just the, the organization of like videos and image content is ridiculously painful for that stuff. So my daughters play soccer and I was in Mississippi at a regional soccer tournament and one of the fathers uh of the team we're just sitting there talking as we're playing a game down in Gulfport Mississippi probably three months ago right around the conference Mike and um he's and we just started talking about business and he, he knew what I did and I said what do you do Scott he's like I'm in the marketing world I said that's what I thought and he's all really I, I have this software and I just started working with Grant Cardone and I'm building out his whole coaching program with our CRM and marketing platform I look, I'm like what is it and he said, it's William and Hill company. And I said, how'd you get tied in with uncle G? I'm actually, you know, acquaintances with him. And we just started talking about it and he showed it to me because there's an app, we have an app, right? And he showed it to me. And so we built everything specifically for STR over that three month period. And that's where we, we came out with market, my STR three weeks ago, really almost four, it'll be four weeks on Sunday. So what it does is it's just like HubSpot. It's an all in one marketing platform that is simple, easy to use, no coding required. You can put your direct booking website, your sales pages unlimited. So if you have a portfolio like you or I do with multiple properties, you can put everything on there. You don't have to have a website, five different websites over here and not be able to access it. And then the email marketing, MailChimp or ActiveCampaign, 
text message marketing, it's all under one platform. Um, the big thing for us is it saves time. It's easy to use. The support is off the chain. Have you ever heard of anybody in the SaaS space doing live free support five days a week? Doesn't happen. So literally, Scott, my team is doing live free support five days a week. We have, you know, white glove onboarding, all these things like, um, you know, you, if you have a direct booking website, it's $175 for up to five pages. They'll, they'll rebuild your website for 175 bucks inside our platform. If you don't have a direct booking website and you want a full five page website, all you need to do is select one of our over 300 templates. You go and pay 175 bucks, deliver the images and the copy, and it'll be done for you in like a week. So what I've tried to do is fix every pain point that we all have with digital marketing. I don't have time. I don't understand technology. It's too hard, all this type of stuff. So Chris and I have put a lot of our shit in there as well. So and our big plan, uh, which you get access to, you got my full Facebook ad marketing funnels already built out for you in there, right? What Chris and I just built yesterday was a three-page website inside of Market My SDR, uh, live on our YouTube channel in under an hour. That you know, if you're at the host, um, super host plan or the next level plan, uh, you get that for free. So we're trying to just bridge all of these gaps. So it's got social media marketing and scheduling, reputation management, host your videos, direct sales pages, websites for direct booking. You can embed your your guesty or you know hospitable or owner res codes to take the the direct bookings right on the sites. But then you can create these funnels with automation that includes email text messaging, video, all under one roof. That is so hard when you have your, like for me, I was an active campaign user for email. I had simple texting, you know, for uh, my text messaging. And then I had a, a pipe drive for a CRM and I had lead pages for all of my websites and my pages. That cost me like about 580 bucks. I can get all that now for 197 and have it under one roof. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, we have a full blown CRM you know, in there as well. It's insane. And Scott, and I got to give a lot of kudos to Scott and you know me well enough. I could have easily come in and started pricing it. You can get in the host plans, 97 bucks until Sunday. I could have launched that at four ninety nine, No all problem. Day long. All day long. And Scott was gracious enough because he's the one that supplies all the support on the back end. And I said, dude, I got it. I need something under a hundred bucks for my, for my community because they all need it. And it's going to be this huge barrier if it's 500 bucks for people with one or two properties, right? I mean, if you're netting 20 grand or 30 grand off a mediocre property, you're not going to spend $6,000 a year on software. So he was gracious enough to say, let's do a $97 a month plan and a 197 plan. Um, that pricing, I don't know when this will air, but that pricing does go up on June 4th. So if you see this after June 4th, it's going to be 197 and 297, which is still ridiculous. So for those of you guys in the Facebook group, jump on that now because this will not air by June 4th. So you guys <laughs> early access. Oh, so. is it, are we broadcasting live in your Facebook group? We, we are. We right? are, yeah. So. Yeah, so I mean, I would go to marketstr.com, take a look at it. We've got live chat if you have questions. Uh, you can hit me up as well if you have any questions. But on the Build Short-Term Rental Wealth YouTube channel, you can see it in action and how easy it is. We just did the sales pages and built the website yesterday. But the thing about having everything in one spot and cohesive, it's like it's like why you use Guesty and I use OwnerRevs. Everything's in one spot versus calendar syncs breaking with iCal and you know Price Labs connecting to individual stuff. It's just it's so much easier. And that is my superpower is is marketing and it needs to be your guys' superpower as well, because without that, we're just reliant on Airbnb and Verbo. And if you saw mine and Mike's state of the industry, you know, at the SDR Wealth Conference, we're we're talking saturation has skyrocketed. I think it was 41%. Um, and bookings at that point were already down. I think it was like 11%. But the reality is that's a skewed number because of the increase in the number of units that are in, un, under the platform, right? So I'm seeing most people, I don't know what you see, Mike, that are, are down about 20%. The ones that are marketing, the ones that are doing some Facebook ads, and, and one of the things that I want to make sure that everybody understands, I don't do all the stuff. I don't use everything inside of Market My STR. Email marketing is number one for me. Uh, Facebook ads is number two. 
buy, sell trade groups is number three. Those are my three focal points. I do zero social media organic for my properties, just FYI, zero. Mm -hmm. Um, so I make my hay and I outperform air DNA's 90th percentile as a portfolio, uh, right now by 56.2%. Um, and if you guys are in that 75th percentile or 90th percentile and you want to elevate, there's, you know, marketing, I can't market a shitty property, but if you have a good (laughs) to best property, then that can be marketed. But you, it's, it's kind of like that Montana story. E, you know, I told you two and a half years, I was looking for that thing. I don't know if you guys know this, but when we walked in, my wife took a picture of me because I went through the front door, went to the big windows on the back, and I just stood there like this, just gazing out at the river. She said I was there for like five or six minutes. She posted that on Instagram the next day, and um, we flew to Scottsdale to go look at, at properties, you know, down in Tristan's neck of the woods the very next morning. And on the flight there, she said, what do you think about the upstairs of the house? I'm like, I don't remember it. She said, oh, that's because you didn't fucking go up there. I said, I didn't care. So the, the reality is, is this is a really nice cabin, but I will never market the cabin. I will market what's outside. So if you, when you're buying a property or you walk onto something that you already own in your portfolio, think about the marketing aspects of that and how you're going to position that for the guests that you want to attract. I just want to say one thing real quick, and this is my opinion, and I'd love to hear both of you guys take on this. We've been talking about direct bookings and marketing for probably the last two years, right? And I think COVID kicked a lot of people into like, all right, I got to figure out this direct booking thing. And it was still kind of a nice to have. Now it's becoming more of like, you should be doing this. Within the next 18 months, if you're not doing this, I don't think you're going to be in business. To be fully transparent, it's not optional. I just want to be super clear about that. Like if you can dial this in now and learn it, you're going to be ahead of the curve in the next 12 months when other people aren't doing this. So get ahead of it now, learn it. This tool makes it so easy. And again, I've always been an ops guy. I know hospitality. I know business. I know operations. This makes my life from a marketing standpoint so much easier. So take advantage of this and invest in the skill set now because this is going to be the difference maker. We talked about it at the conference. Like, your properties have to be, they have to stand out. They have to look good. They have to be in the right areas. That's baseline at this point. The baseline in the next 12 to 18 months is you're going to need that. Plus you're going to need to know how to market in any other industry that you get into. If you don't understand marketing and sales, you're not going to be in business. We've just been spoiled since, I don't know, the last seven, eight years we've been spoiled. Now it's time that everybody has to learn this to level up. Every single business, I've done 27 startups, Mike, you know that, and every single business that has been successful has been on the backbone of sales and marketing. Uh, The great Steve Jobs, who I respect tremendously as an entrepreneur, maybe not as much as a husband and a father and a human being, but uh, he said, you know what, it's not about the best product, the best marketing and sales wins. Mm -hmm. And if you have the best product, like I believe Apple does today, then Uh, you know, that's the double whammy for you. That's like Willy Wonka's golden ticket. But if you have an average property that's like in the 50th percentile or 75th percentile of Airbnb, if you can just find one hook, two hooks, two things to be able to stand out that your competitors don't do and actually do the marketing, that's where you're going to elevate. I'm now doing almost 38% direct bookings. Um, During COVID, I was like less than 10%. You know why? Because I didn't have to do off-platform marketing. I did off-platform marketing in 2017, 18, 19, basically 2020, 2021, 2022, didn't have to do it. All I had to do was log into Price Labs and say, oh, you know what? Hey, Price Labs, you're not priced high enough. Let's raise the price, you know, and do some manual price adjustments and just keep increasing. But really last fall was the first time that I had to get back in and start doing it again. I was forced to. And I see a lot of a lot of benefit to be able to go from 10% to 38% direct bookings and i think that will continue you know to elevate as time goes on um and that's easier too just fyi i want to give a little disclaimer if you have multiple properties in your portfolio it becomes easier because i can introduce i can take people from a lake to the mountains to montana to arizona you know down to the beach whatever that is it's a little bit more challenging with just one property and that's kind of the cool thing inside market my str there's education. Um, you have access to sales pages, Facebook ads, stuff, depending on, and it's different on every level, 
uh, to what uh, we've already tested. We've A-B tested them and have built and work. Yeah. And I think that's honestly like the greatest, um, one of the greatest values. Because I see a lot of people talking about doing the right booking website. But then if your content of the website is shit or it doesn't speak to anybody, I would almost argue what is the point of having it? Because so many people are like, let's do the direct booking website. I'm like, okay, perfect. Now what? Like what, what's going on it? What's the rest of your strategy? Because again, like you can build the, the outside, but if then nothing speaks on the inside, people are just going to come out of it and maybe go to a much simpler website that you, you built, build, but the copy is right. It engages the emotion, engages the dreaming, engages the vision, engages the location mind. And that's going to convert way more than a super cool website with all the bells and whistles that then just doesn't, doesn't deliver on the copy or doesn't deliver on the overall. And if yeah. you're not driving the traffic switch. to it, though, nobody's going to find it. That's even worse. A hundred percent, right? You know? So that's the big thing is the traffic driver. No, using social media, organic email, buy, sell, trade groups, you know, uh, that stuff. That's that's a huge component. And that's what misses. People go spend three, four, five thousand bucks to pay somebody to build them a, a website and then they've blown through their budget. So they don't have any ad budget. Right. And then the second part, and this is what's fundamentally different in the way that I market than uh, you know, most people. And Mark and I kind of debated this in our workshop uh before at the conference, before the the conference, but I use sales pages. People that use websites have to understand that you have no CRO conversion rate optimization built into a website, right? So we CRO conversion rate optimize every one of our sales pages. So just like any astute investor and understands liability protection or Jeff Hampton at STR law guys, whatever it is, they're going to tell you one property, one LLC, one bank account, you know, one credit card or debit card, one set of QuickBooks, keep everything isolated, right? Well, it's the exact same thing with our properties. You know, if you run a Facebook ad or do a social media post about, if Mike does that for Orlando, for his property down uh, in Kissimmee, and then he sends him to a page and it's all about his boutique hotels and a property he has up north and I'm looking for Orlando, now you've just confused me and immediately decreased the opportunity for conversion, right? And a sales page is structured, organized a certain way. There is no menu at the top of it. There's no social media icons. You either get a quote, convert, book, whatever your call to action is, or you slide your cursor up to that top left-hand button to leave. But either way, I've pixeled you. And when I pixeled you with a Google pixel or a Facebook pixel or a LinkedIn pixel for you MTRs that are out there, then I can retarget you by simply doing this, right? And if I can retarget you, this is the biggest problem that people have. They think if I run Facebook ads for two days and I don't get a booking, they don't work. You have to understand, Mike, you mentioned the funnel. You got to understand the sales form. We're casting this wide net. This is called tofu at the very top, top of the funnel. That's where all of us and anything that we buy, whether I'm looking at buying new glasses or a new computer or mouse or renting a short-term rental or anything, we're making ourselves aware of what are the options that are out there. That's when somebody sees your first ad, your first post, whatever it is, but they're not ready to buy. So that's top of the funnel. We got to narrow that down. Now we're in MoFu, middle of the funnel. That's where we're looking for solutions. So like I look at one of the, one of the Facebook ads, I've never, I don't think I've ever said this publicly. I run it for MoFu right in the middle of the funnel and I target every single person that does not live in my geographic areas around my property. So all the tourists that are there. I exclude the locals and I send them an ad answering the pain points of the problems. Like in North Carolina, as an example, it's still very old school. A lot of houses still don't supply linens and the hosting sucks. It's like a 4.57 overall rating. So I take like bad linens, bad cleaning, can't check in early, blah, blah, blah. And I'll send them the video. Hey, next time you come back, I got you covered with all that and much more is my actual ad. Because they're looking for solutions for their next year's vacation after just having a shitty experience, right? So awareness at the top narrows down into the middle. That's where we have to provide our solutions to the problems and understand the BOFU, the bottom of the funnel, is all about decision making. And that decision making component, everything we do 
organic social media, email marketing, ads, we all have to tie that into all three sections. So typically a buyer, if they're in buying mode, what we see is they're taking between three to seven days to purchase. Three to seven days to make a purchase. That's why I have optimized and taught just, and there was two Superhost Sundays ago, about why every one of us in our Airbnb and Verbo, Expedia, Booking.com list, uh, listings, it the very first sentence in our description needs to say, welcome to, insert your property name in city and location. So welcome to Dragonfly in Gulf Shores, Alabama. Because the astute buyers, the astute guests will search for that and they'll go in and they'll type in Dragonfly, Airbnb, Dragonfly, Gulf Shores, Alabama, Airbnb. So if you're watching this in Mike's group or you're listening to this on the podcast, go type in Dragonfly, Gulf Shores, Alabama, Airbnb and see what you pull up. You're going to find my owner res direct booking site because it's been up longer than my built, my personally built page. So it has more SEO authenticity. Does that make sense? So that's one way to be able to drive direct bookings. We want to get to them at that top phase because if they hit that, because I have the Google or the Facebook and Google pixel on the owner res or on the market, my STR pages, I've got them pixeled. Now I can retarget them. This is the critical component because we're talking when people are booking 90 days, six months in advance for like summer vacations or to go skiing and tell your ride or whitefish or whatever, that, that sales cycle elongates sometimes to three, four, five months. That's why we need to get them to our pages to pixel them or capture email to where we can put them into a funnel to be able to email market to them. Love it. Love it. Well, Bill, as always, a pleasure. A masterclass. And a yeah. masterclass on marketing. Um, before we get into the last question, again, thank you as always. Where can folks learn more about Market My SDR? I know we've talked about it a ton and we've said it, but I want to reinstate that one more time. MarketMySTR.com. Yeah. That's it. MarketMySTR.com. Um, and I would really encourage if, if somebody's, you know, in the, the sales page or the website side, just go to the Build Short Term Rental Wealth YouTube channel and watch Chris and I. And, and not only did we build a full website in under an hour, really, let me clarify that Chris built a full website in under an hour, but we taught through the entire thing. Chris could have had the entire thing done in 15 to 20 minutes. So we show you how to do it step by step. Uh, we show you how easy it is, but most importantly, we're teaching you. We're talking a lot about those things, how the, the CRM and the marketing and all that type of stuff that goes into it as well. But uh, it's marketmystr.com. Uh, um, and I appreciate you guys having me here. I always love being on the podcast and I can't wait to see you guys in person again. Absolutely. And guys, we'll make sure to have both those links down below the market, my SDR, and we'll grab the link for that for Bill's channel and for that video. So you guys can just check that out in the show notes. Uh, Bill is always the last question we ask all of our guests and I'd have to go back and compare what your answer is each time, but <laughs> what is your number one secret to success with short-term rentals? I mean, I could say right now that it's the marketing and reiterate about marketmystr.com <laughs> and it's a superpower, but I think honestly, for me, that's so important, but it's, it's evaluating the, the right property at the right time. Um, I just closed on a, a sale yesterday. So I'm on day one of a 1031. Um, and I'm looking in four different markets right now in the four markets, nobody could guess the markets that I'm looking at. It's not the Bourbon Trail, it's not Orlando, it's not Gatlinburg, it's none of those markets. And because the day that I decided to sell this property, and we're about two weeks late on closing because of the buyers. So it's been almost 60 days, which I'm cool with, I'm fine with that, but I'm every day I'm researching into the properties and I'm trying to source off market deals. So I think how we find properties and evaluate them, and, and the word underwriting probably is not used enough um, and I know you and I had some discussions when you were underwriting, you know, your 52 room boutique hotel, that's a big deal, but it's just as big of a deal to you. If you're underwriting a $350,000 property and you only have $75,000 in life savings, right? So underwriting properties, I think is probably my true superpower, um, and finding the best properties available with the highest IRR cash on cash, cash flow, whatever metric that you're looking for. Uh, so that's, 
I think the easy road out is marketing, but that's probably my biggest superpower and that's what separates me. And then I get to throw the marketing on the back end after I've purchased right. Yeah, Love I it. think the answer has been pretty on brand with who Bill is. And I think if anybody says that you guys haven't been talking about underwriting properties, they haven't been listening to either one of you two. Because that is to me, when I think of the two of you together, that is kind of like what the sermon is every single time we see you. Like every time you guys get together, there's always going to be a conversation about it. And that's why you have been so successful at what you do and why you have helped so many people, right? It's like yeah. insurance though. That's the problem. People don't, insurance isn't sexy. They don't want to pay for insurance. You know, people just, underwriting's hard. I mean, like doing the deep research that's not in a listing that the general public doesn't know. Um, you know, and I don't know how much time we have. I could give you just a super quick story. One of the reasons that I deployed all of my properties out of Fort Morgan, Alabama to Gulf Shores, Alabama, a couple of years ago, right at the beginning of COVID was because I knew that the airport was opening up private flights, right? Or excuse me, public, it was going commercial. So Jack Edwards, which was a private airport was, it's already turned into Gulf Shores International and those flights are starting like now, right? So property values increase, easier to get to, people don't want to drive farther away. Um, I make a lot of my purchases that way. I'm under contract on a four bedroom townhouse in Bozeman, Montana, because of insider knowledge that I've been able to get through research and my connections, 1.465 or I could sell it today for 177 on a wholesale. Uh, and I'm not even going to close for another two months, right? And it has an STR permit in Bozeman, Montana, which is almost impossible. I'm going to give you one place I have never, in, well, I bought some land there actually. Um, and mo just because nobody's going to do this, but there is a town called Ennis, Montana. It's 25 minutes and a gravel road from Big Sky. People don't know that that was just cleared in January for two, I think it's 1,500 or 3,000 foot runways to go in and an a airport. What do you think that's going to do to the town with a population of like 280 people because of access to Big Sky? So you don't have to, all everybody from Hollywood that goes there to go to Big Sky, to the Yellowstone Club, they're not going to fly into Bozeman anymore and drive an hour down to Big Sky through the the valley or through the the gorge that's dangerous in the winter to be able to get there. This Yellowstone Club and Big Sky are going to blow up Ennis, and it's already happened. I bought a, 16 acres at $11,000 an acre in late February. I could sell it for thirty to thirty-five an acre already. Finding that type of deep research, going into you know zoning departments and seeing what's permitted and what's happening, going to do real more than – Air DNA, more than SDR Insights, that's where you're going to find your best deals. Another mic drop per usual. Thank <laughs> Bill, thank you again for coming on, man. Everybody, you're probably going to want to go back and watch this one with a pen and paper and take a lot of notes and then head over to Market My SDR. Learn the marketing, get it going now, start to master this skill over the next 12 months, and your business will be bulletproof going forward. And you'll no longer need to fully rely on the OTAs and you can start taking back control of your business. So as always, appreciate you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Have an amazing week and we'll talk to you soon. Hey, STR Nation, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. And in the comments, let us know what topics you want us to cover on upcoming episodes. And we'll make sure to get that in the books for you. And if you really want to learn how to launch, automate, and scale your short-term rental business, if you want to go deeper, then check out our free masterclass at strsecrets.com.